Chris Vanini, the, at the Athletic for Coach. What does it mean to do something that hasn't been done since uh, Jim Valvano? Well, first of all, I, I want to say this, man. God is good. Um, the, these young men um, in the locker room from day one have kind of believed in everything that I preached to them and everything that they talked about. You know, at the beginning of the year, we, talk, we talked about what are your goals. And I think to a man, everyone said we want to win the ACC. Check. Uh, what's your other goal is obviously, you know, go on and compete for a national championship. And we're still alive for that opportunity. Uh, means a lot. You know, I, I think, you know, our school deserves it. Um, you know, our players have really worked hard. Um, the fans deserve it. Uh, we've done a really good job. Um, you know, when I say we, I mean, I always say we. I'm saying these young men in the locker room through all of the adversity that we have went through, ups and downs of winning games, losing games. Um, they never lost their faith and stayed together. And it, it means a lot. It really does. And by the way, um, Congratulations to our um, women's team, too, for making the Final Four. That's really special. Mm -hmm. Coach, Drew Jackson making headline news. Is this by far your best coaching job? You know, it, it, I've had some really good teams. And, you know, for us, I would say something about all of my teams are really special. These guys are so special. I, I think, what is it, nine now? Nine elimination games or you go home. Um, they're tremendous. Like you ought, to, you ought to see us every day. Uh, they make it easy for me to wake up every morning and, and come to practice and work hard with them because of who they are as personalities. I would say this, I've learned more basketball from these guys than I learned in my entire career uh, because they know how to work. They're great people. They work hard. And so, and you know, it's hard to say if it's my best. You know, you'd have to ask somebody else. But I, I'm sure having a lot of fun with this group. Okay, now on the other aisle. Kevin, I'm sure that tomorrow morning you're going to start scouting Purdue and get ready, but in the moment now, uh, have you had a chance to pinch yourself and just kind of realize what has happened over these last three weeks? I haven't. I mean, it's, I'm sitting here, and I'm, I'm blessed to be here. And, and, and I'll tell you what we did. We, we broken the postseason up into different segments. So when we left to go to D.C., we said we wanted to win D.C., we won D.C. Then we, we went to Pitt. We said we want to win Pitt. And now, obviously, in Texas, we won Texas. And it is, um, you know, it gets to a point, you know, when you're winning games and like the way we are, where you expect to win. And I think our guys now are expecting to win. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's beautiful to watch. Like, I, you know, our defense has been tremendous down the stretch. It's been so great. You know, and at the beginning of the – at the halftime, we talked about that it was 26 to – I mean, 27 to 21, the difference in the game, neither team was scoring. They had taken um, nine three, I mean, nine free throws. We had taken three. We made two. They made nine. And we, I talked about, hey, if you can come out and duplicate your defense in the second half, we will find a way to score. And we were great in the second half, too. So, I mean, it's a miracle run. Uh, but we're not surprised. Like, we don't, we don't go in. We didn't come into this tournament and say, hey, let's just try to be here. We came here to win it, and we did. So we, now we got to move on to our next stage. Okay, let's go to Zoom. Okay, we have another question from Dan. Dan, please unmute yourself and go ahead with your question. Wake up call, DT.com. Of course, Dan Fortora again. Coach, just what the biggest blessing has been throughout this season with this team specifically as you reflect on this whole run that you've had and the journey you've had, just the blessing that you've had with these student athletes? I think the biggest blessing is they, they've stayed true to who they are. And, you know, obviously, you know, when you go through a season, there are going to be a lot of ups and downs. Um, number one, you got to win every type of game to advance. Um, but there are going to be some emotions. Like we, we started off five and one in our conference. We lost our last four games. Um, they're going to always be some adversity. And I, I, you know, what these guys have strung together games. They've never wavered in their belief. Uh, they've stuck together. Uh, we go by our art. Um, I talk about that all the time. A R T T, accountability, relentless, toughness, and together. And when things go bad. We, we lean on that, and I mean, I can't say enough about them. Um, you, you ought to see them. You know, the, these guys are really, they're really locked in. They're really um, a close-knit bunch. 
uh, the memories that they're creating are memories that's going to last a lifetime, and, and that's what makes it really special. Those are the blessings that I see. Okay, in front of the TV camera, you. Me. Right, you. Right, You're close right. enough to the TV camera. Oh, right. I didn't um, know either. I was like, who is he? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay, but I'll take it anyway. Hey, uh, Kevin, I have a couple questions. I'm Adam Teicher from ESPN. Uh, you said a minute ago uh, I, I, you can tell your guys are now expecting to win. H how can you tell that? What tells you that? And, again, I'll have a follow-up as well. Yeah, the focus. I mean, you know, I just – you know, we're, it's weird because having a day in between is almost seems like it's um, something wrong because we're so into what we did in the ACC tournament, you know, winning five games in five days. But they're locked in. They understand. It's like I think a couple of people asked me that were, you know, around the team that hadn't been around the team is, are you guys always that loose? And we are. Um, you know, these guys, I, I've learned more new rap songs than I ever thought I could imagine. But I, as I said the last time is, you know, we, we mix it up now. We play a lot of gospel music, too, which um, they scream just as loud when they do that part of, which I'm glad that they know those songs. But it's, um, it's a loose bunch. Um, they, they believe in one another. They trust in one another. We had some adversity in this game, and it was at times you thought Duke had the momentum and we could have, you know, folded a little bit, but we absolutely didn't. Um, DJ and DJ, I think, had 35, 36 points together in the second half, and you guys shot what? 70-some percent in the second half. Anything at halftime tell you you could have that kind of offensive turnaround, particularly with those two guys? Yeah, we just we, – we missed a lot of chippies in the first half. I mean, we left a lot of things on the rim. Um, I, I, I counted myself about five, um, you know, missed layups. And my assistant coaches were losing. I was like, relax. Uh, we're going to be fine. It's not like that they're setting the world on fire offensively either. And so we, as I talked about, we talked about defending. We talked about, you know, staying, you know, to the, you know, to the scouting report and the ball will go in in the second half. You know, one of the things, DJ, DJ Burns didn't play a lot because he got his second foul. And so we knew we had a, a advantage, you know, throwing the ball inside to him. They decided, which some teams do, not to, to double team him. And obviously he shot 13 for 19 and had 29 points. Almost out of time for Coach. We'll take one last question on Coach's right up front. Kyle Boone with CBS Sports. Uh, Kevin, what did you see in DJ Burns when you recruited him from Winter, obviously beyond the box score? And how has he impacted this team? Because obviously 29 points tonight, he's been productive, but I think his impact goes maybe beyond the box score. Well, that's, that's, the, that's one of the better questions I've had asked in a long time because typically I play with two forwards, you know, uh, a Ben and a Mo together. But when DJ hit the transfer portal, I was like, man, I'm a, I got changed. I mean, this, I mean, he changed me. You know, like I've, I've never thrown the ball inside as much as I have in the last couple of years. Um, great touch, um, you know, great footwork. Uh, last year, one of his issues, he could pass the ball, but he didn't have a great, to, a great assist to turnover ratio. And now he's doing that. Um, it's changed the way I look at you know, post guys now. Like, it's probably only three of those in the country, and I know we're going to play a really good one, you know, next week at some point. Uh, but I'm looking for some more guys that I can, you know, throw the ball inside. And I now found out that I could have a mix of throwing the ball to a post guy and having guard play. And so, I mean, tremendous personality. You know, I, I, I've recruited him since he was basically when he went to Tennessee out of high school. And obviously, when he went into the portal, we looked at everybody in the portal, and we needed some size, and um, he fits the bill. And I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's on my team. I don't know how you guard him. You know, I'm, so I'm, I'm excited, and I hope nobody figures that out. Yeah.